Taran, let's go to Lisboa Market. I want to go to seafood stand. If I can go to the pizza restaurant, I'm game. Do you want to learn to play Big Hardy to Lisboa? In this video, we're going to take you through the full rules for this game, and if you stay tuned till the end, you can pick up some tips along the way. Coming up. Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Liverpool University. Now let's learn the rules to Mercado de Lisboa, game by Julian Pombo and Vital Lacerda and published by Eagle Griffin Games. We're using a prototype copy of the games and so the rules and components you see here may not be final. Let's get to the table. Mercado de Lisboa is a competitive tile placement game for two to four players set in this market in modern day Lisbon. There is also a solo mode which we won't cover in this video. Players are proprietors trying to influence the layout and customers in the market to earn as much money as possible. Players will spend money to erect fresh produce stands, earn money by building matching restaurants, and trigger the earning of money for everybody by strategically placing customers around the market. The game plays until the market is filled up to its capacity, either with stands and restaurants or customers, and the player with the most money wins the game. This game is largely a re-implementation of the city building portion present in Vitalis Serda's Lisboa, but breaks it out into its own smaller, self-contained, but still very competitive game. To set up the game, start by taking the 12 circular restaurant tokens. Remove one pub, which shows the beer icon, then shuffle the rest of the tokens and place them grey side up on the spaces showing the dot. Shuffle the square stand tokens in the bag and place one on each of these three squares at the bottom of the board. There are five different stand types in the game. Separately shuffle each of the four rectangular customer stacks and place them face up in their designated spaces in the car park. Then move across two tiles from the top of each stack. Each player starts with one coin, their eight wooden stand markers in their colour, and three stands drawn at random from the bag. Players may optionally play with hidden money, and if you wish to, then place your money behind your coloured screen. Finally, pick a first player, and if you're playing with four players, give the fourth player the other pub tile that was set aside earlier. This is placed face up next to the stands. You're now ready to play. Mercado de Lisboa is played in a series of turns. On each turn, a player takes a single action from the four that are available. They may open a stand, open a restaurant, bring in customers, or take one coin. Then, any scoring that was triggered by that action is resolved, both for the active player and any other players. Play then passes to the next player clockwise, and so on around the table until the end of the game is triggered. But more on that later. Players will ultimately try to score as many points as they can by setting up combinations of stands, adjacent to restaurants, and in the same rows and columns as matching customers. A stand will score more points the more matching restaurants it's next to, and the more customers are on the tiles in the rows and columns. These are what players should keep in mind as they take their actions. To open a stand, take one of the face-up stands from your player area and place it into any available space in the market. This can be either an empty square or a square which currently contains a face-down or grey side restaurant tile, in which case you take that tile and place it face-up into your player area. Take one of your player-coloured stand pieces and place it onto the new stand. Next, check to see if there is already one or more customer tiles in either the row or column that you place that stand, which has a matching icon on it. If there is, you will immediately score some money for that stand. I'll talk about how to calculate that money later in the video. Next, you must pay to open that stand. Count up the total number of stands currently in that stand's row and the total number currently in the column. 
then pay the higher of those two numbers. So in this case, three coins. The cost does count the stand you just built and does not count any of the circular restaurant tiles. If at this point you cannot afford to open the stand, then you cannot take the action. Finally, refill your hand by taking any one of the three stands at the bottom of the board and adding it to your player area. Then refill the collective supply from the bag. To open a restaurant, you must have at least one face-up restaurant tile in your collection. Take that tile and place it in any available space in the market. Once again, this can be an empty space or a space containing a face-down grey restaurant, in which case you take that restaurant tile and add it face up to your player area. Then, as a reward for opening the restaurant in the market, you gain one coin. To bring in customers, choose any one of the face up customer tiles on the left of the board and then place it into one of the empty customer spaces around the outside of the market. There are two restrictions on taking this action. Firstly, you as the active player must have at least one matching stand in the row or column where you place the customer. So the purple player, for example, could place this customer here because the grapes match that stand, but would not, for example, be permitted to place it here, where only green has a stand and it doesn't match. This prevents players from intentionally blocking off spaces where other people could score. The second restriction is that the row or column must contain at least as many stands as the number of customers shown on the tile. One, two, three, or four. So purple can place this one customer tile in this row, but would not yet be allowed to place this two customer tile here because there aren't yet enough stands. This forces players to start from the lower scoring customer tiles earlier in the game and work their way up to the more valuable ones at the end. Once a customer tile has been placed, all matching stands in that row or column will immediately score whether they belong to the active player or one of the inactive players. So if the blue player placed this customer here, both the blue and green players would score their matching stands right away. Again, I'll talk about how to score a little bit later. Finally, refill any open spaces from the top of the relevant deck. Your final action option is to gain one coin. The other thing that may happen on your turn concerns having three of a kind. If you begin your turn with three stands of the same type, then you may return them to the bag and draw three new tiles at random from the bag before taking your action. Similarly, at the end of your turn, if you need to take a stand from the main board and they are all the same type, you may choose to return them to the bag and replace them with three new ones before drawing. Now we'll talk about scoring. And as we've seen before, scoring is triggered every time you create a pair between a stand and a matching customer. This can occur when a stand is placed in line with an existing customer or when a new customer is placed in a line with existing stands. To score an individual stand, go through the following process. First, the stand is worth one coin. Then, any orthogonally adjacent opened restaurants of the matching type adds one to that value. So this restaurant is open, this one matches but it is not open. So this will be one plus one is equal to two. Then multiply that number by the number of customers on the tile that you're pairing with. So here it's two times two is equal to four coins for that pair. The pub restaurant, showing the beer icon, matches with all five stand types. So when scoring this tomato stand, it will be worth one, plus two for the two matching restaurants, multiplied by two for the customers, is a total of six coins. This stand is not orthogonally adjacent to any matching open restaurants, and therefore is simply worth one times two, is two coins. If building a stand, the stand can score multiple customers at once, so when placing that stand, it is not adjacent to any opened matching restaurants, and therefore scores one times two for this customer, and one times one for this customer, a total of three. 
There are one, two, and three customer tiles, each of which matches with two stand types. And there are five, four customer tiles, each of which matches with only one. The end of the game is triggered in one of three ways. First, when there are only four empty customer spaces left on the edge of the market. Second, when there are only four available spaces left within the market. This includes both empty spaces and face down restaurants. In each case, the player who triggered the end of the game does not get any more turns, but each other player takes one more turn before the game is over. The third way for the game to end is if all players consecutively take the gain one coin action, or in the case of a two player game, if each player takes it twice in a row. In this case, the game ends immediately and no player gets any more turns. Any players who have restaurant tiles left in their possession cashes them in for one coin each and the player with the most money wins. If tied, whoever has opened the most stands in the market wins the game and if still tied, victory is shared. And that's how to play Mercado de Los Bois. We hope that you enjoyed the video. At the time of filming this video, Mercado de Lisboa is about to go live on Kickstarter, so we'll put a link in the description below when it's live so you can check it out. If you enjoyed this video, please help us by hitting that like button. Subscribe to us, you can also hit the meeple in the corner to do so, and hit the bell icon so you'll be one of the first to know when we have new and exciting videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for my board games journey. And finally, if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please write them in the comment section below. See you in our next video!